Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another episode of College and Career Pathways, where every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2 p.m., we provide you with information on various colleges and universities, skilled trade programs, financial aid resources, technical schools, training programs, uh, employment opportunities, and uh, skilled trade, no, soft skilled, <laughs> soft skilled uh, enrichment. Today we are here with the Michigan Laborers Construction Union. Did I say that correctly? Am I close? Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're working on switching the name because it's a little complicated, <laughs> but uh, we're Lyuna Training of Michigan now. Good. Oh, okay, good deal, good deal. Well, welcome, Teresa. We're so glad to have you. <laughs> Thank you. So, hi guys, I'm Teresa Frederick. I'm with, like I said, Lyuna Training of Michigan. What LIUNA stands for is the Labor's International Union of North America. So we are the Construction Craft Labor's Union. And we're going to start by, I have a little video here that tells you guys a little bit about who we are and what we do. And I guess, uh, Tony, let me know if you can't hear it or something. The demand for construction craft laborers is projected to increase 24%. Thousands of new union construction jobs offering good pay, health care, and retirement plans are on the horizon. I am 26 years old, just turned 26. And I, we own a house, I own a boat, I own two vehicles. One's completely paid off, the other one's just about paid off. I go on vacations, I own two horses, two dogs. I don't, I don't struggle anymore. I used to struggle and now I don't. <laughs> Michigan is coming back. Rebuilding to shape the future. It takes people that can make things happen. Men and women working with their hands and their heads to get the job done. Hard-working Michiganders, like the members of the Laborers International Union of North America, LIUNA. In high school, I tell you to go to school, get a degree. I could have graduated high school and probably I can sign up to laborers the next day and started coming to the training center and started making money instead of spending money. The apprenticeship, I was a little older, some kids that are fresh out of high school coming, which I wish I would have had that knowledge that this was available, it would have probably sped things up instead of two years in the laborers, I'd have 10 by now and I'd be closer to retiring. It's not intimidating once you get into class. The teachers are guys from the field that have been there. They know what they're talking about. They were laborers before they were instructors. You show some initiative and you're willing to learn. I think a lot of guys see that and are willing to help you along. You get your journeyman card and you learn the trade. You can, you're an asset. You can go anywhere you want. I think if you put the time in and you're willing to learn, it's not, it's not hard to get into. And just being in the field, I see there's not a lot of young people joining. So it's, I think if you have some initiative, you can kind of punch your own ticket and really go somewhere. The Michigan Laborers Training and Apprenticeship Institute exists to help laborers stay up to date on the latest construction craft technologies and offers apprenticeship training for people looking for a good career. Skilled trade workers are needed to meet the demands of an ever-changing industry. Along with our signatory contractors, we've created this training center to be a gateway to a challenging and rewarding career in the construction industry. Skilled trade workers work on jobs as diverse as pipeline, curb, gutters and sidewalks, sewer and water main, roads, bridges, utilities and mason tending. The diversity of needed skills demands a commitment to training and education. That is why Michigan laborers and our signatory contractors have invested in a state-of-the-art training center for our members to learn new skills and enhance existing skills. The complex includes a large membership meeting room, 
classrooms, a cafeteria, and shops outfitted with the latest tools and material handling equipment. Those who attend not only learn how to use their hands to do quality work, they are also taught advanced math and science that's needed on modern construction sites. The training these workers receive includes practical and theoretical knowledge, as well as the safety training to be productive and valued employees. The construction industry hasn't had very many women because I think a lot of people still believe that it's just a man's world. And that's definitely not the case. They say when, when you enjoy what you do, you never work a day in your life. And so I never woke up thinking I didn't want to go to work. I wanted to be there. They're given opportunities to experience the different roles of everyone they'll encounter on site from supervisors to inspectors to contractors. The result is an education that allows construction workers to learn new skills, advance in their careers, and gain a competitive advantage in an ever-changing economy. Among the keys to the effectiveness of the training center, the specialized facilities, allowing for job-specific training year-round. For example, the sand floor in the work bay and ventilation systems in the ceiling and walls allows excavation for sewer and water main systems up to five feet deep. At 60 by 80 feet, it's large enough to duplicate construction activity in an environment more conducive to learning than the Michigan weather outside. With a complete array of concrete forming systems and material handling equipment available, construction craft laborers are able to master skills of form setting, reinforcing, layout, and placement of concrete in an environment that enables them to learn during the training. Me, personally, I like working on cars, but I don't want to do it for a living. I was going to automotive school, and I was paying about $40,000 a year just to go to automotive school for three years. I'm a hands-on learner, so I figured construction would be a good trade for me. So I came here, started learning, and I enjoy it. They pay me to go to school here, um, which is nice. I didn't know nothing about construction, so I came here and they taught me everything. I want to earn enough money so I can go hunting and fishing whenever I want. It was probably the best decision I could have made. Build a challenging, rewarding career in the construction industry. It's an industry where you can create your own opportunity. The Michigan Laborers Training and Apprenticeship Institute exists to turn those opportunities into reality. You get that first paycheck and you're just like, wow, you know, <laughs> this is great. And then you, you look over your benefits and you're just like, oh my gosh, I don't need to borrow money anymore and I can start saving for a vehicle, a house. Yes, Michigan is rebuilding and the members of Lyuna locals across the state are trained and equipped to make their mark on it. The Michigan Laborers Training and Apprenticeship Institute, training Michigan's skilled workforce. All right, so that video gave a little bit of information about what we do as construction craft laborers. You could see some of the job site video that they had. This graphic here kind of goes into a little more variety that we do. So as a construction craft laborer, you kind of have your hand in everything. So you could be doing road work. So when you drive down the road and you see those barrels and the people wandering around, uh, with shovels or rakes or pouring concrete, those people are laborers or demolition. So running those big jackhammers and breaking stuff with bigger hammers, knocking down buildings. Those people are also laborers. Uh, I mentioned concrete pouring. So pouring sidewalks, driveways, curbs, all those people are laborers. And you could also do hazardous waste cleanup. So the people that are in those full-blown suits 
those people are also laborers. So they're kind of involved in every aspect of the construction industry when it comes to more commercial building. So we wouldn't be building your house, we'd be building a stadium or a school or a bridge, um, more large scale construction. So if you are interested in being a laborer, I've got a list here of things that you need. So the first one on there, you have to be 18 years old. Uh, construction is a more hazardous work environment. And so you have to be 18 years old to be out on those job sites, uh, be able to physically perform the work. So we do a lot of physical work. So you have to be able to do that. Uh, you need reliable transportation. So you gotta have a driver's license and a way to get to work. So it's very uncommon that your job site is right outside of your house. You know, you might have to travel 15 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe an hour. So you are gonna have to travel to get to the job site. And a lot of companies also still request that you can pass a drug test. You know, being out on the job, like I said, it's a hazardous condition. So they need to make sure that you aren't under the influence in any way. So if you do meet those requirements, so you have, you're 18, have a driver's license, and you're ready to work, we have a few different ways that you can get in. So one way is through a local labor union. So throughout Michigan, there's seven different locals and you would find the one that is closest to your area. On our website, we do have a map and it'll tell you which one that is. And you can reach out to them. And if they have work for you, they can put you right on the job site today. So we don't have interviews as far as some trades, you have to go to the hall and do testing and interviewing. We don't have any of that. It is if they're able to put you to work and you're, you meet those previous requirements, they can put you to work right away. Uh, the next thing on there is a signatory contractor. So what that means is we have a bunch of different construction companies, contractors throughout Michigan that are, are signatory to the laborers. That means they are part of the laborers union, they hire the members of the union and they put them to work and they're actually the ones paying their paycheck. So if you found a contractor in your area that was hiring and you got hired by them, you'd be able to get straight, they'd send someone out and you'd get signed up and you'd be right into the laborers union. Uh, next one on there is military members. We have a helmets to hard hat program for people that are military veterans. They're able to get into the apprenticeship program through their experience in the military. So once you're an apprentice, when you start working, you start as an apprentice. And what that means is you start at a lower pay rate than a journeyman or someone that's more experienced. So as an apprentice, you start at 18 to $20 an hour. And as you get more work hours, so you're out on the job sites. And as you get more training hours, as in you come to our training facility that you saw in the videos, then you work up the ladder until you graduate. And with those steps of the ladder on this chart, different stages come with raises. And then once you have your 4,000 work hours and your 300 training hours, you are a journeyman and you make full scale and full scale it varies based on what location you are and what type of work you're doing, but it's normally in the, in the upper 20s to lower to mid 30s is where you would be as far as pay goes per hour. So you saw that I mentioned that you have to have training hours. That's where our training facility comes in, and that's actually where I work. I'm an instructor at our training facility. And we have four of them throughout Michigan. On this picture here, it's where those stars are located. 
So we have one in Perry, one in Wayne, one in St. Joe, and one up in the UP in Iron Mountain. So at these locations, we teach a wide variety of courses that's listed here. And how it would work is you would work during the summers and that since that's when construction is generally the busiest is during the summer. And when things wind down a little in the winter and you might not be working, that's when you would come to the training center and take classes. The classes are generally a week long. Certain ones are a little longer based on what type of work they are. And they're eight to 4.30 every day. Uh, it's Monday through Friday. And <clears throat> we pay you to come to class. So how much you get paid is based on your round trip mileage from wherever you're working to whatever training facility you're going to. The lowest dollar amount you would get would be $45 a day, and it goes upwards of $90 a day. So generally people that come to the training center, they are on unemployment, so they're making 360, and then they get that extra training money on top of it, since it is a stipend. So they could be making upwards of 500 a week to come to training. And on this list here, uh, we offer a wide variety of classes. So say you were gonna go out to a concrete job, but you had never poured concrete before or worked with it before. You'd come to the training center and we have a two week concrete class where they show you how to do sidewalks and curbs and gutters and driveways and back patios with a stamp pattern in it. So they teach you all aspects of construction before you get sent out onto that job site. And so we've got a wide variety of classes. Like I said, some of them have state certifications. So like if you wanted to work in asbestos, we have a state certification. And our OSHA classes, uh, you get an OSHA certification that's good for life. Uh, first aid, CPR, we work uh, through <clears throat> ASHI and your certification is good for two years and it's recognized everywhere. So these are some of the classes that you can take if you were a member. And like I said, we pay you to come and take them. So what, what does it cost? That's, that's what I've been mentioning. It's free of charge. You don't have to pay to come to our training facility. We pay you to come there. And we have everything you'll need for that class available to you. Now this one you might not be thinking about since you haven't quite started work yet, but when can I retire? Uh, one of the great things about the unions in general is that they have a pension program. What is great about the laborers union specifically is that we still have 30 years and out. So what that means is if you work 30 years, you're eligible to retire with a full pension. So say you guys got in when you're 18 years old, right out of school, you could be 48 years old and be fully retired receiving a pension. And what your pension is, is there is a certain dollar amount and it is sent to you on a check every single month. Uh, other benefits that we offer is healthcare. So you don't have to take money out of your own pocket to receive health care. So your contractor pays in and you have health care for you. Uh, if you're married, your spouse can have it. When you have a family, your family has it. And all at no cost to you as an individual. And that is all I have. So I'm open for questions. Excellent presentation. Um, what I'm absolutely loving is that I'm seeing young ladies in the field because a lot of our students that are young, young women, they don't really think that construction work is for them. And I'm like, oh my God, yes it is. And I, I, can, my, I can definitely attest to an earlier statement where um, one of the guys was saying, if I had known about this earlier, I would have started this a lot sooner. If I had known about this earlier, 
I promise I wouldn't be in education right now <laughs> because it is just such an incredible opportunity. And it's like you said, with regards to the retirement, if you're starting like right out of high school, you can conceivably in your middle ages, retire and pursue another passion of yours. That's the beauty that I find in skilled trades. It affords the ability to transition to other career paths. And, you know, I love that. I absolutely love that. <laughs> you know, and, and, and if I could manage a little stamina, I'm seriously in my mind considering a career change because now is a good time to do that, you know. <laughs> it is, the work is definitely there. And like you said about um, having women in the field, they want them. Uh, contractors are actually offered programs where they receive benefits to have women on their jobs. So they're trying really hard and pushing really hard to get women into the into the trades. Good deal. Now, I know that some of the other trades, um, you have to take like an entrance exam, like the AC work keys, work keys exam or the um, Cassius examination. Is that required for the uh, for you for your apprenticeship program? It is not. So oh, wow. we don't have the test. Um, we don't, some of them have an interview process and some of them have a wait list. We don't have any of that. And because of that, we are one of the more accessible trades. So we encourage people to, if they are, A, they want to be an electrician, but they might be on a waiting list to be an electrician, come work as a laborer. As a laborer, you see all trades. It takes all kinds to build those job sites. So if you're out there as a laborer, you might be working with an operator, an electrician, a pipe fitter, a carpenter. You might be around all those people every day and you get experience in the construction industry, which makes you more valuable as you know an electrician or even whatever trade you might wanna go into. So it's always a good place to start because we do, we are the, one of the more accessible trades. Good deal, good deal. Um, I want to ask uh, people in our gallery, if you have any questions, please feel free to raise your hand and I'll unmute you, or you can type your question in the chat, and we will be more than happy to answer that for you. Um, so your program is four years, and once completed, they do receive the journeyman's license for a laborer, construction person. So it doesn't really have a time frame on it. Oh, okay. Based on those work hours and the training. Okay. So there are people that may take four years if they don't come to the training center or they don't work as much on the job, but there are people that work through it in two years. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That is really awesome. Because it's 300 class hours, which might sound like a lot, but something like the concrete class I mentioned is 80 hours. So that's one class and look how close you already are. And, you know, a lot of the other ones are 40 hours. So you get, you know, you come for a month or two in the winter and you've got a lot of hours already and you could knock it out in your training hours in two months conceivably if you went. Wow. Now you are an instructor. Did you begin your career as a laborer or, or did you come from a different industry or so I originally, when I graduated high school, like you said, I didn't know what type of opportunities there were because when I came out of high school, it was a big push for college. That was basically yes. Yes. college. So that's what I did. I went to college. I got a bachelor's in business management. And then after I graduated, I applied to a lot of jobs. I had a lot of job offers and none of them seemed interesting to me. But I thought, I guess I got to pick one of these miserable things because this is what I chose to get as a degree. Mm -hmm. And uh, my family actually owns a construction company. And I always wanted to work in the field, but never, never really was given the opportunity to because I was in school and all that. And uh, so my mom said, if you want to start, I'll let you start. So she said, you got to start as a laborer and then 
you know, we'll see what happens from there. So I started and I worked in excavation and road work. So I installed like underground utilities, so like water main, storm sewer, sanitary sewer, things like that, and graded for roads. And eventually I learned how to run the GPS equipment. So instead of using sticks and strings to lay everything out, we actually have computers. We've advanced the technology even in the construction industry. So we have computers out there on the job site and I learned how to use that. And I kind of worked up from there and opportunity came to come to the training center because they were looking for someone that knew more about GPS. And that's kind of how I ended up here. But yeah, almost everyone, like, almost everyone that's at our training facility began as a laborer. So there is definitely room to move up as well. There's a lot of foremen out there on the job sites that are laborers. So some people are discouraged because they think, Oh, you're going to work so hard for so long. Well, you might not have to. You might get into a position where you're working hard with your mind instead of your body. You know, you could be a foreman, you could run a crew, you could run multiple job sites. You know, you can definitely move up. Wow, that that is so awesome. Um, also, with some of the skill trades, well, I'm not even going to say some. With the majority of the skilled trades, it has been my experience that during their apprenticeship, the courses that they are taking to help complete the apprenticeship can also be used as uh, college credits. Is that correct with your program as well? Yeah, our partner, our apprenticeship program is um, it's a setup where you can go to like a community college, and I think there is like maybe six classes that you would have to take in addition to what we have and you would receive an associate's degree and I believe it's industrial science is what you would receive your associates in and we also I don't know if anyone might be involved in some other you know construction programs but our apprenticeship program recognizes any training you already have so say someone did go to school and they took a you know construction math class we would give you credit for that. Or if you took a OSHA class or a first aid class, we give you credit for those as well if you took previous training. Good deal, good deal. And, and so for the individual that doesn't know for sure what they want to do if they want to go to college or work with their hands and skill trade, it's a win-win situation because if you do go the apprenticeship program route, the courses can then be apply to um, an associate's degree at a community college. So that is really an awesome opportunity for students um, to take advantage of it. it. It doesn't exclude them out of one box to the other because of their career choices. So that's really great. You guys in the gallery, did you have any questions? Cause I know I'm doing a lot of talking but um, I don't mean to exclude you from uh, having some input and say, if you desire, raise your hand or, and I'll unmute you, or if you want, you can put your questions in the chat box. Um, I did want to ask, with some skill trades, there's like certain periods of enrollment. Is that the same case for um, you guys? It is not. We're open enrollment at all times. So all right. <laughs> generally, whatever, like I said, whatever local is closest to your area is the one that you would apply with. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, if, and we some some trades as well. You have to get hired through a hall. We're not that way either. So if your uncle works at a construction company and they're hiring people and he's a laborer. And so they have laborers there, that company can hire you and then they come up and sign you up and you're in. So you can also seek your own job. So oh. if, you know, if you're driving down the road and you see Dan's excavating and you think, I wanna try that and you get a job at Dan's, they come out and they sign you up in the union. Okay, and, and you would continue to work at Dan's? Yep. Oh, okay. And that oh, wow. you're not obligated to either. So again, some have it where if this place signs me up, I have to stay with them through my whole apprenticeship program. That's not the case either. So say you try 
you know, that's the beauty of the labor's diversity as far as work goes is say you try excavating and you really don't like it, you don't have to quit and start a new trade. You can go and now you could try hazardous waste or asbestos removal. And then you could also try concrete. You can try all that stuff within one trade. Oh, wow. Does maintenance technician or maintenance work qualify as laborers construction or no? Um, it can. It just depends on what type of work it is. Like we'll have laborers out in plants at all time and they might just be cleaning and sweeping or, you know, bringing tools to other people. So there's a, there is a wide variety of work for sure. Um, I see all kinds of people come into the training center and they'll say what they do. And I'm like, I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Um, also, does an individual to apply to be a part of your apprenticeship program, do they have to have their high school diploma? It, on all of our stuff, it says you do, but I have seen people without them. So oh. I don't think it's a full deal breaker because I have worked with people that don't have their GED or haven't graduated high school, but it is of the desired qualifications. It is one of them, but if you show up every day and you work hard, I mean, that's the beauty of it is that you can excel. Is there a, an age cutoff? It starts at 18, but how high does it go? As high as you're willing to work. <laughs> so we have the 30 and out. No hope for me. <laughs> yeah, we have the 30 and out rule for retirement, but then we also have uh, what's called an index 85. And it's your age plus your years served. So that's kind of for people that don't get in as young so that there's still that balance where if you get in, you know, when you're, 60 you're not going to work till you're 90 so that's kind of how it how it works there where your year serve plus your age has to equal 85 and that makes you eligible to retire okay good deal good deal well thank you so much we it, it was a pleasure to have you here and uh share all the information about your program uh, again it's an excellent opportunity and if you guys in the gallery don't have any questions, and it doesn't appear that you do, we will bring this session to a close. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Teresa. A pleasure having you. And I look forward to having you guys back again next fall. Sounds good. And if you ever need anything, information, pamphlets, just speakers, oh. anything, make sure you let us know. If you have any flyers, you can email me a flyer and I can put it out on um, all of our uh, social media channels. Okay. Good deal. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.